Hello Tube Dwellers and welcome. I'm the Arcadian and this is Mavenogi Duel. Today we're going to be running a PvP deck that is focused around Seeker Nerva. It's quite an easy deck to run, but it's still a lot of fun to play. So let's take a look at it. Up first we have Free Summon, an excellent counterspell to a large amount of the meta, and also every time a creature gets frozen, it charges up Nerva. Fantastic. Magic Missile, one cost removal spell. Book of Knowledge, because we really want to ramp up to level 2 before we start to play any of our creatures, at the very least. Holy Missile, again, same as Magic Missile, one cost removal spell. Heavy Offering, to take care of any elves or elephants that may be summoned on turn 1, as well as dealing with uh, potentially any other creatures should their HP turn out to match the number of empty slots on the board. It's uh, surprising how often that happens. Ritual of Darkness. Uh, this card is predominantly used if you want to... Well, let's say one of your creature cards, uh, Nerva or uh, uh, Skathach, is uh, low on health, they're about to die anyway. You can use the Ritual of Darkness, get the resources back, use the resources to cast Angel or Peria minus one, which then just brings that creature card back out onto the field. Very handy. Surprise attack, standard light removal spell. Uh, in every deck basically. Unsummon, again, is just useful for getting some resources back should you want to uh, refresh one of your characters, but it can also be used to buy yourself some time if they bring out something extremely unpleasant and you don't want to deal with it that turn, but you know that you can deal with it next turn. Just unsummon it off the field and make them resummon it. Persona Skathach, the lady you will love to hate. Uh, nothing really to be said here, she's just a phenomenal card, and her ability to uh, transform constantly throughout the battle charges up Secret Nerva every time it happens. Witch Xena, one of my favorite cards from WNB, I use her a lot in both PvG and PvP. Uh, she's just fantastic. Her ability to transform uh, creatures means that she can counter a large amount of the meta. Doom Machines, Beast Jurgen, other Nerevas, even other Xenas if she gets her ability off first. Uh, she's just wonderful. And every time she hypnotizes a creature, it charges up Secret Nerva. Secret Nerva herself, of course, a walking counter spell. Who doesn't love that? And finally, a bit of a surprise card, Angel or Peria minus one. Um, most people will not expect to see this in your deck um, if you're doing 1v1 uh, duels. If you're doing the arena, they'll obviously know that it's there, but because they see Orperia, they'll think that it's a resurrection deck, which this isn't. Orperia is there as a utility card. A lot of the time you won't use her, but when she is used, it's fantastic. The enemy has, uh, enemy players have a habit of over... Um, indulging, over-investing, I suppose, in removal spells uh, to get rid of Skathach, Xena, and Nerva. These are big, big threats, so it's understandable. You want them off the board. However, if they spend a large number of resources, use up their removal spells or whatever they have, you know, ramping up the grave cost, and then you just bring Angel or Peria minus one out onto the field, and boom, they're right back there. Uh, not only do you then have excellent board pressure again, but it's, it's a real blow uh, psychologically. So, quite simple to run, but a lot of fun to play. Let's take a look. As usual, I won't be running the PvP arena simply because that takes too long. Uh, we'll be doing 1v1 battles instead. Ah, Scamcad, what do you have for us today? Oh, interesting, a Ninja Hanjo minus one. Hmm, that's actually not a bad card. I have some ideas in mind for that. There we go. Mm, don't want to give up my Albi though. Ah, yeah, never mind. <laughs> Still though, Ninja Hanjo minus one. Surprisingly, not a bad card. Um, I do have a couple of decks in mind for that. Maybe I'll <laughs> do that uh, next week. All right, 1v1. Internet duels. Oh, yes, and I'm using the Banoba hero just because, basically. Uh, she recently got a buff, and I haven't really had a chance to experiment with her yet. So, why not? Uh, because she uses a lot of dark spells, she can generally uh, maintain her HP whilst at the same time smacking down everybody else's because everybody's HP drops whenever a creature dies. Uh, just about any hero is fine um, for this deck, really. There's no sort of specific hero. Obviously, you know, don't use Tina because there's no gold. Um, but just about anybody will do. Avoid Mari. She's generally a very good hero, but she can actually mess you up if her ability targets down the hypnotized creatures. You don't want those dead. Oh, interesting. Okay. 
Super from Japan. Using a hero we don't tend to see very much. Let's see what they've got. All right, they go first. That's great. Means we can uh, cast the Book of Knowledge and they charge. Fantastic. So we will Book of Knowledge that, get ourselves up to uh, level two next turn. Let's see, let's see. Okay, Goblin Gravedigger. So she obviously wants to charge up towards darkness for some reason. We'll just ignore that. We don't care about the uh, two HP uh, damage that it's going to give us. It's not important. And another one. Okay, so yes, she's definitely trying to ramp up towards darkness for some reason. So we don't want that to happen. On the other hand... Hmm... Anything else ready to play? Well, Xena's almost ready to go. We could drop the heavy offering and bring out Xena, which I think is what we'll do. That means that if these creatures die, let's put her. Let's put her there. Um, if the creatures die while they're hypnotized, their ability does not activate. Now she's in an awkward position. She can level up and let Xena do her thing, or she can attempt to kill Nerva be, uh, Zena, sorry, before that happens, but at that, in that case she doesn't level up, uh, which means she's in mm, trouble. This is a no-win situation for her. Okay, she chose to level up. That's probably the best choice she could have made there. All right, Xena will activate and give us back a card and transform. Good, the highest attack value minion. That works out very well for us. Now then, what do we want to bring out next? Nerva would be nice, but Skathach would be acceptable. All right, it seems like we're naturally charging towards Nerva, so that's fine. We will leave the rest of this on the field. And we won't do anything else, we'll just charge. I don't want to use my free summon until Nerev is out on the field. Let's see here. Now, if she brings out another creature, chances are Xena's just going to um, hypnotize it. So she's not, she's charging up, okay. Which means both of the Gravekeepers now, bye-bye. And we can bring out both Nerva and Skathach, which I think is what we'll do. So we'll play Nerva. And we will play Skathach. Now, <clears throat> we'll play her over here. Because we don't really want the hypnotized creatures to die. The more hypnotized creatures are out on the field, the safer which Xena is. And we have no real reason to kill them anyway, so leave them alone. It's two slots. Ah, and she forfeits. It's two slots then that she can't use anymore. So that's how you do that. Part of the power of this deck is that if you can anticipate what your opponent is attempting to do, you actually have a lot of answers to them. So that was by no means a bad deck on her part. The uh, Goblin Gravekeepers are very good cards, very good value uh, for their uh, cost, attack, health, and their ability. Uh, they pay for themselves in the majority of cases. Unfortunately, Xena's ability um, counteracts everybody else's ability. So once Xena's out on the field and has gotten rolling, there's not really a heck of a lot you can do to stop her beyond investing heavily in removal spells or uh, transforming her or you know, clearing the field with something like a Holy Spear. It's difficult. And because of her attack uh, health value, uh, Xena can't be removed with most low-cost spells. So you're going to have to spend more, probably, to remove her than it cost to cast her. And that's a problem because you're not just using one... It's not even like you're just missing out on resources. It's not that you're just losing one resource because you've cast one spell. Generally, you need to cast two. So you're not only losing resources, you're also amping up the grave cost on those cards, which means that 
if you want to use them again, and you probably will when you go up against Skarthach and Nerva, especially when Orperia has just brought Xena back out onto the field again as well, uh, it means that you're going to be paying even more the next time you try to do it. And unless you've managed to maintain a good resource growth, you may very well end up just not having the resources to cast these spells. So yes, the moral of the story is that Xena, Skathak, and Nerva together are quite fearsome. Hmm. Ah, good, here we go. Ah, Banoba versus Banoba, Noraku. Another Japanese player. Oh. Well, it is, uh, what, early afternoon? For them at the moment so makes sense mono dark hmm okay makes me think that we're gonna have to deal with an ultimate grim reaper ultimate gates of hell could be beast kin jurgen uh, could be another one of them that would be unfortunate but not the end of the world I don't like leaving the cemetery out, but there's nothing I can do about it at the moment. So we'll just have to let it charge up. The good thing is that it takes a while before it can pay for its cost. Okay, that's not bad. Do we have Seeker Nerva out on the field? Now then. We have choices here. I think what we're going to do is we're going to bring out Nerva. And we are going to discard Heavy Offering so that we can summon Xena next turn. I don't like leaving the cemetery charging, but I also don't want her summoning any creature. No, okay, clever. Summoning any creature in front of Nerva. All right, so that's done a fair amount of damage to us, unfortunately, no matter. We bring out Xena, and we'll put her there. Okay, now we really want to start charging up towards Skathach, who has three more. Hmm, I don't really want to discard anything, though. So what we're going to do in order to uh, increase our chances of getting some energy onto Nerva is that we're going to now use free summon. So if she summons a creature, <coughs> which you obviously can't this time, but if she summons a creature from this point on, uh, and we just hope that Xena doesn't drag our free summon out, it's not a, a hugely likely, but you never know. Um, hmm. Yeah, okay, we'll just keep charging. I think we're in a decent position at the moment. We don't need to worry too much about this. Okay. All right, let's see. She's obviously charging up towards something very, very big. Animate dead, okay. I don't know if that activates... Oh, there is no target to resurrect. Huh. Oh. Hmm. Hmm, that's unfortunate. Okay. All right, now we need to move towards Angel of Perry. She took a lot of resources to do that, though, so we're actually not in a bad position here. Okay, we will level up. It's unfortunate that we didn't get the darkness. I really could have done with it getting the darkness there. But it's not too problematic. If we discard... Yeah, if we discard the Ritual of Darkness now and just hope that we get some darkness when we charge up next turn. Okay, that's fine. I don't really care about the, the dead. Not gonna do a heck of a lot of damage to us. Good, perfect, we got some darkness. So I'll drop Angel or Peria down uh, in front of the dead because we just don't wanna take any damage unless we have to. What brings out Nereva, perfect. How yeah, much? Yes, and she has uh, all of that. So we will also bring out Skathak. That'll take Nerva up to four energy, meaning that we can block two spells. Boom. 
Okay. We don't have Xena, and we're not going to be able to bring her out again this fight because we only have uh, zero dark resources at this point. Okay, so she tried to drag to hell. It obviously didn't work. And now she is in a very, very dangerous position. So we're going to revive just to get more cards into our hand. And we're going to take advantage of our uh, board presence and her low resources to charge up and just maintain that gap as best we can. All right, so the dead goes down, and she's got one hit point left. With five resources in one turn, yep, yeah, there's nothing she can do, and we win. So you can see how Angel or Peria really helped turn that around for us. Without Angel or Peria, um, she would just have been able to use any spell that she wanted on us because Nerva would not have been out onto the field. Angel or Perry allowed us to bring out Nerva with three energy, which then allowed us to play Skathak immediately, which took us up to four energy. Um, it's generally a very unexpected combo. Most people don't expect to see an Orperia with a Nerva. But, as you can see, very, very effective. So, two fights, and Bonoba's been doing well, actually, so hooray. <laughs> nice to be able to finally use that... Uh, Special skin of hers. Okay, we will take a look in the binder now and we'll look at possible substitutions. There we go. All right. Now, this deck doesn't have too many substitutions. If you're running Nerva, you really should be running Free Summon. And, of course, uh, the, the three cards that you really shouldn't replace is uh, Skathach, Xena, and Nerva. Now, most of these are, uh, they're not easy to get, but they're not that difficult, with the possible exception of Skathak. If you don't already have Skathak, this is going to be a problem, because it's a collector's card. You can't get it in any booster packs anymore. It was only available for a limited period of time a little while ago. Uh, you can still find it in the player stores from time to time, but it goes for millions. So, if you do want to replace Skathach with something because you simply can't get a hold of her. Uh, look for something that has some kind of transformative abilities. You're looking for something that can bring, uh, well, it can, it can change any of the cards in your opponent's hand. If you can't get any transformative cards, go for something else with utility. Closer Mistletine would be fine, uh, because it allows you to shunt the enemies uh, over to the left-hand side of the field, which can be useful for either uh, getting them out of your way or putting them into harm's way. Um, if you're going to be using uh, Xena, it can be a good idea. Uh, you can shunt the uh, hypnotized creatures out of the way, provided you have enough hypnotized creatures that they will survive closure's ability. Um, what else? Uh, Cher would also work out fine. She has a transform ability. It's not phenomenal, but it's not too bad. Um, Light Elf, if you wanted some early game pressure, just a creature to play down on the field, that would also be okay. And if you wanted something that could obliterate the field, uh, you could go for Holy Spear. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, ambush might be better, but again, you're not really looking for too many area of effect removal spells because you don't want to hypno hypnotize creatures to die. Um, so yeah, uh, Skathak's a tricky one to replace. All right, back to the beginning. Magic Missile. Uh, I would advise keeping it. Personally, you want two one-cost removal spells simply because it'll allow you to, uh, some breathing room to level up to level two, and also it doesn't cost too much. You don't want removal cards that cost too much resource to cast because then you'll have difficulty summoning Nerva, Xena, and Skathach. Book of Knowledge, I'd keep it. If you're going to switch out to Book of Knowledge for something else, then you'll probably need Jax's Note instead uh, because you really do want a way of ramping up. The only time I'd say that you can replace Book of Knowledge without worrying too much about it is if you're running the hero Tarlac because he uh, sort of levels up his experience whenever the enemy levels up or revives. So. That can be quite useful. Holy Missile, uh, same thing as Magic Missile. Keep it if you can. Heavy Offering could be replaced. I really like it for turn one removals on the Elf. But uh, if you don't want to use it, then you can switch that out for something else. Uh, drag to Hell if you're having difficulties. Um, skeleton if you want a, a low-cost creature to play on the field immediately. Ritual of Darkness 
uh, I don't use it very often, but when I do, it's incredibly handy for bringing out or Angel or Peria. Um, so keep it, I would say. If you don't want to keep it for whatever reason, then again, you could replace it with uh, Drag to Hell or a Skeleton if you really, really wanted to. Surprise Attack, keep it. Uh, any light deck really should be running Surprise Attack or a light Command Hunting or something like that. Unsummon, you could replace if you wanted to. Resummon's a pretty good one. Uh, it allows you to completely replenish uh, Nereva's energy, as well as um, putting Skathak back into a non-transformed position so that she'll transform again at the end of your turn, that kind of thing. Uh, it's all good for energy use. But un Unsummon or Resummon, I really would uh, choose one or the other. Uh, tsunami, possibly, if you were having difficulty with people flooding the field with stuff. And, but... Mm. Skathak, Xena, and Nereva, keep them. Absolutely keep them if you can. If you have to switch out Skathak, we talked about that already, but Xena and Nereva definitely can't really be replaced in this deck. Um, <clears throat> if you want to, you can use a Nereva plus one, but I wouldn't advise it. The normal variant is absolutely fine when it's placed next to Skathak and Xena. If you get rid of Skathak, then maybe the plus one would be the better way to go. And Angel or Peria minus one, Again, you can replace it, but you saw how it saved my life <laughs> in the last fight there. So uh, keep it, definitely keep it. And always go for the minus one variant, of course, and go for the dark one as well, because thanks to the ritual of darkness, we're able to generate dark resources much better than we're able to generate any other kind of resource. And that's about it. Once again, if you'd like to copy the deck, that's the code there. Uh, and if you want any more information, uh, then just leave a comment down below. So, if you liked the video, leave a like. And it only takes a second, and I really appreciate it. And until next time, have fun, and good luck.